Momentum Workflow Automation and Media Asset Management, Episode 3. We're looking at a different workflow page to start with this time. It's not meant to illustrate a real-world workflow. It's just to show a few of the third-party devices that Momentum supports today. The approach of Momentum is to allow media companies to make unrestricted choices from all the file processing tools available on the market. This means that you can easily add a variety of transcoders or QC tools from competing vendors into your workflow and you are not locked into one particular product range from a single manufacturer. This central column is a list of transcoders and on the right is a list of QC tools. New devices are being added all the time and for anyone familiar with Snell's Morpheus Playout Automation product, you'll know that adding new device drivers in response to project requirements is something that Snell's been doing reliably for many years. You'll probably recognize most of the names shown here in the transcoder column. We even have control of tools that are sold as workflow solutions themselves, such as Telestream's Vantage and Harmonix Rosette WFS. Although both of these offer some level of workflow function, this is at the file processing level of the transcoder device, so it does not offer the same breadth of functionality that Momentum as a vendor agnostic system does. There are many more functions and third-party devices available in Momentum, including file delivery mechanisms such as DG Systems, Extreme Reach, Comcast and Javelin. With all the expensive investment in these devices, it's important that a business knows it's getting a return on that investment or that it can identify bottlenecks in the system which may justify additional investment. This is where the statistics page of Momentum is useful as it takes the data that is being collected by the system as these workflows operate and presents usage data graphically. The statistics view can apply to any aspect of Momentum's workflows, but I'm going to take a look at a couple of the elements if I expand users, I can take a look at the review fail QC element and its usage is shown against a timeline graph with workflow, processing slots and waiting time shown. I can see there are a large amount of tasks waiting immediately after the weekend which is shown in this pink area here. I can scale the view to see how things have been handled over a period of time and perhaps I want to see how this relates to another element such as the proxy element. So I'll expand transcoders to find the element I'm interested in. I can see there's much lower usage but it does repeat its usage sometime later. So there are long periods of underused resource here which perhaps now I can see I can make an informed decision on how I could make better use of that resource. This data can be exported as an SVG file which is an open format for graphic files supported by most browsers or as a CSV to allow other systems to manipulate the raw data. One way to make use of data like this might be to run a completely lights out file ingest operation with no manual oversight at all. So here's a simple example. You can see we have content delivery being notified using BXF messages and processed by QC tool, Baton in this case, although we're completely agnostic to which tool you might use. So if the supplier has provided invalid BXF messages or the file does not meet the criteria of the QC tool, the files will be rejected and in this case we have email notifications being returned to the supplier. But in your supplier's monthly meeting, the company also has the statistics data to highlight how many rejections there have been. So if that supplier is not meeting its delivery service level agreements, there is an accurate record of failures that could be presented as part of that discussion. Now this is a fairly brief overview of this area of momentum, but hopefully it's given you an overview of its strengths. Thanks for watching and bye for now.